The Dow Jones just rallied 450 points on the hopes that a new stimulus bill is right around the corner. And if some of the most sophisticated traders in the world are banking on a new stimulus bill, I'm excited about what October might have in store for the crypto community. As soon as the cash machine gets fired up and new free liquidity starts to flood the markets, I believe altcoins are set for another significant leg up. And even though we didn't get that in September, I believe that's even for the better as a lot of tourists have left the space. A lot of people that were addicted to those quick gains have dropped their bags, and some of the best coins in the space have completely retraced their August gains. In my mind, this means that we're gonna pretty much run it back, except we're starting like the way things were at the beginning of August, not back in March when the original stimulus hit. In my mind, this means that the alts could soar significantly higher than they did during the last leg. We're gonna be going through some macro analysis as well as talking about some altcoins. You guys are definitely gonna to wanna to see this episode and we're also going to be giving away again a Ledger Nano S at the end of this episode because the last recipient generously re-offered it to the community, to someone who is more in need. And so you'll definitely wanna stick around to the end to see who wins the Ledger Nano. Also remember that each and every comment on this video is entered to win for the next giveaway. It's of course, just for subscribers and if you guys are excited for this episode you know the drill smash those likes and let's get started today the dow rallied about two percent and experts believe that this is based on the hopes for a new stimulus package now ironically this is here set on the backdrop of mike novogratz a historic crypto bull saying that he believes that the highs for tech have already been seen i personally believe that the highs have been artificial since the beginning of the year even though tech had a significant influx of usage and utility due to the post-pandemic conditions of essentially social distancing, work turning to Zoom calls, and all these types of changes to our society that really forced a more significant role for tech in our lives. That said, it seems like the rally has been pretty artificially stimulated, and so I believe that with another stimulus bill, we'll see even more highs after that. But I'm curious what you guys think in the comments section below. This is, of course, based on the fact that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told CNN that Democrats may offer their latest stimulus proposal as legislation if revived talks with the Trump Trump administration do not yield a deal that her party can get behind. Yet even as investors are feeling good about a possible deal, economists are a bit more pessimistic. Morgan Stanley became the latest bank to downgrade its economic growth because of the slimming chances of another stimulus bill this year. I personally remain optimistic. Even if it's not this month, I believe that it will get through, let's just say by Q1 2021. In the case that this happens, I believe that alts will continue to slide. However, it will open up a tremendous opportunity for those alts to retrace back to their highs. And I see that as a potentially life-changing opportunity. If you knew that the DeFi majors, the Polka majors, the Oracles, all the projects that seem to absolutely thrive during this recent bull cycle, if you knew that they were gonna retrace to their highs, who cares if they slide another 10, 20, 30%? It just offers in even more gains once we do flip to being bullish. That's how I'm viewing the market right now. Who knows, maybe 2020 is in for a little bit more sliding. Maybe we are going to get a bill passed because guess what? People are getting increasingly down desperate. And if we don't get a bill passed, I believe that the sell-off in the mainstream markets, which of course, those are the retirements for all these congressmen, I believe that they'll start to feel the heat and want to inject some sort of stimulus into the equation, if only for selfish reasons. And for more confluence, we're looking and seeing yet about a half a percent sell-off in DXY. This is the US dollar index that tracks the strength of the US dollar. And when this sells off, things that trade against the US dollar tend to do a little better. So this yet shows even more confluence that things might be turning in favor of more more risk on assets like equities or altcoins. So the new deal is looking like it's gonna be $2.4 trillion. Of course, the red line for the Republicans was pretty much clearly stated at uh, 1.5 to $2 trillion. So this is about a trillion dollars more than what we understood to be the red line. However, we also know that the Democrats have come down a trillion and the Republicans, maybe they need to come up a little bit. The new bill would reinstate enhanced unemployment benefits, direct payments to eligible Americans, the Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses business loan funding, aid to airlines, and could be ready for a vote on October 2nd, almost exactly one month before the presidential election. Who do you think benefits more from a stimulus deal? Do you think that this is something that purely benefits the Democrats, showing that they were able to push a bill through? Do you think this is something that purely benefits the Republicans, showing that while their leader was in office, they were able to provide aid to people? I'm wondering which side actually benefits more. I believe strongly in figuring out who benefits most from something as a way to deduce what the outcome 
outcome could possibly be. So if you're able to logic as to who's going to benefit, you're able to find out who might be most motivated to get a deal done. I'm very curious what you guys think. I definitely have my own suspicions as I've laid them out here, but it does feel like there should be a strong bit of bipartisan support for this deal. If anything, getting a deal done is seen by pretty much everyone as beneficial at this point, as even conservative economists are saying that the economy desperately needs some stimulus. At any rate, we know the effect it would have on the markets, which is that that cash is going to find a home in what we've seen is the most price reactive categories like tech stocks, as well as, of course, altcoins. So I could see this being tremendously positive for the markets. As you guys know, I've been going on about this for pretty much months now. So I'm very curious what you guys think. Of course, let me know in the comments section below. In all this, while Bitcoin sets a record for the most days above 10,000, everyone was looking for it to fill that gap at 9,600. The reality is on a lower time frame candle, some would consider the gap sort of filled. It definitely got touched. I've heard some analysts say that they consider the gap kind of filled. I don't know about that. I certainly don't even know if the gap is real or if it's just this kind of weird self-fulfilling prophecy. At any rate, this is good news to see the resilience of Bitcoin's price as we're looking for the markets to turn on and create more bullishness. Of course, the true Bitcoin bulls out there that believe that the halving alone will catalyze the price up to 100,000. Well, I believe in a more macro view, a more macro analysis, but in that view, price holding above 10,000 is extremely bullish and it shows that Bitcoin would rather go higher than lower right now, which is very, very good for the space. Let me know what your guys' Bitcoin price predictions for October are. I've seen people saying new all-time high in October. If that happens, it would be absolutely electric for the entire crypto ecosystem. And I thought this news was interesting and I think it's actually quite bullish. Let me explain. The CFTC charges a crypto futures trading platform for failure to register in the United States. What happened here is Pax Forex used a network of US-based affiliates to solicit American retail investors. In doing so, Leno Group violated the Commodity Exchange Act. So what they're saying here is that because American affiliates solicited American retail traders, even though this exchange is offshore, that the CFTC is moving in and wants to regulate. I actually got word from a little birdie back about six months ago. We were actually accepted into the Binance Cloud Exchange program and me and some really awesome people were gonna set up a futures exchange and we were gonna set it up offshore and not allow Americans. And we thought that that would essentially insulate us from regulatory scrutiny. However, we heard from some high up lawyers that essentially the regulatory crackdown was gonna start coming down and that they were gonna start clearing out the space so that the big exchanges like CME and what might happen is the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ might end up getting a Bitcoin ETF. So essentially all of this is clearing the field of what they consider less than savory futures exchanges for a Bitcoin ETF. So if this is the foreplay, if you will, for a Bitcoin ETF, then this is extremely bullish for the space. It could be seen as the CFTC and essentially the US regulators really being extraterritorial and overstepping their bounds. But I actually see it as them getting ready to essentially give Bitcoin the full green light. So I would see this as the first of probably a series of crackdowns on derivatives trading exchanges. But to me, this is in a weird way bullish because I believe based on the knowledge that I have that this could be foreshadowing a Bitcoin ETF, which would be extremely, extremely bullish under the current conditions of the new halving and potentially more stimulus in the economy. Or in the example that they end up just printing the dollar and weakening it, I believe that this could be just extremely good conditions for Bitcoin. Let me know in the comments section below if you agree with my analysis that this is as a first really extraterritorial crackdown on a futures exchange is a reason to suspect that they're clearing the field for a bigger move into an ETF. That's based on whispers I've heard from the regulatory community, but I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below. And we had a really nice pump out of Octo last night, reaching a new all-time high yesterday, uh, one of the few coins which in September has established an all-time high. And a coin that I've been waiting for uh, to hit the market for quite some time, Rio DeFi has finally hit the market as our fuel and it looks like the price history here on CoinGecko only goes back to today. It's already trading on Hotbit, Gate.io, Who.com, Bithum Global. Obviously the most volume here is on Uniswap. It'll be interesting to see obviously the other token that they launched out of this ecosystem. Ohm token uh, did some insane growth right in those first few moments it hit Uniswap. Um, I don't know if it's trading quite as hot as Ohm. It had 50 million dollars in trading volume on Ohm. Maybe it'll get there here on Rfuel. Uh, but interesting to see where this project goes. Obviously Rfuel and Ohm 
Elm have both been on my list for uh, September for quite some time because I knew that this would be hitting at the end of September. And here we are getting a nice pop. It looks like this popped up pretty significantly. We'll have to see what happens with this one, but I'm curious and it's definitely one on my list. Something I've been talking about for a while that I think will perform pretty well, especially if we get another leg up here in the alts due to more stimulus. And as promised, we're going to be giving away the Ledger Nano S again because the last winner graciously passed it on like a true Chad legend. Here we get a random number six. Let's go to the videos. One, two, three, four, five, six, NFT mania. Let's go ahead and copy that and pick a winner. All righty. And we have Tiago Cardozo. Great topic. Tiago, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Elio Trades or on Telegram at Elio Trades. Obviously, you must be a subscriber, so we're going to make sure that you're subscribed before getting you that ledger. And to everyone else, we're going to give out another one next week, so have no fear. All you have to do is comment below the videos and you'll be entered to win. So we might be in for yet another round of free money given out by the government, which would be extremely bullish for the trading markets, probably not so bullish for the cash reserve, at any rate, people are hurting. They need some help. And it would be amazing if the government stepped in. It would also be amazing for those altcoins, which as much as I'm a big believer in cycles and the fact that, hey, it did this before, so it should do it again. I'm an even bigger believer in free cash, finding a home and assets that gain in value. That's a narrative that just makes sense to me. And it's certainly a catalyst I could see carrying this bull run in the altcoins for a significant leg further. Now, what happens after the stimulus dries up is anyone's guess. And to me, it's not even necessary to go there. But as soon as we get confirmation that another bill might be making its way through the Congress, this could lead to some extreme growth in some of our favorite projects. And for that reason, I'm not turning my back on the altcoin sphere, not anytime soon. And all of the narratives that I think carried us through that first leg are going to carry us through the next leg. Let me know in the comment section below which coins you're most excited for if October turns into a money printing party, just like we've seen throughout the middle part of 2020. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you got some value out of it, do me a favor and destroy that like button. If you guys are not already subscribed, we're going to be covering the most exciting and undervalued projects in the space, like we did yesterday with Octo, which got a great pump. And I'm going to be outlining all of the coins that I think are set to benefit the most from new rounds of stimulus. So you're definitely going to want to see these videos, and the way to do that is to subscribe and make sure you have that little bell notification on. YouTube's known to censor cryptocurrency content as well. If you're the last one to know about it, it might not be as useful. So during alt seasons like this, it's very important that you have that bell on so that you're not the last one to the party. If you guys want to connect with me personally, feel free to follow me on Twitter or join my Telegram group, t.me slash Elio Trades Crypto. The links for both of those are in the description. As always, I thank you so much for watching. My name's Elio Trades, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode. You're definitely going to want to be tuned in for the next broadcast. As usual, my name's Elio Trades. If you want to follow me and connect with me personally, be a part of these crazy tweet storms here, then follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades or join my Telegram group, t.me slash Elio Trades Crypto. The links for both of those are in the description. As always, I thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.